So guys, in today's video, I got for you 10 different fragrances to smell and test, some of which I'm already familiar with and some are brand new to me. So if you like watching these type of videos, definitely make sure to give this one a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and once you're done with that, we can get started. Hello and welcome everyone to today's top 10 list of brand new niche and indie fragrances, some of which I've already smelled, others are new to me and I'm really excited to just share with you my thoughts on them. So uh, let's get started and the first fragrance that I've been wearing a lot lately is the one by the French perfumer Anatole Labriton and in case you're not familiar with his work, he has been collecting a lot of vintage fragrances for many years and then he started his own brand. I have a few interviews with him, one on YouTube, another one on my Instagram, so make sure to follow me there to stay, you know, updated about what's going on in the fragrance community. And I was really excited for his brand new release that's called Like This. Unfortunately, I won't even try to pronounce it because I'm sure I will fail. So anyway, this fragrance sounded very exciting to me personally because of the notes. As you know, I'm a big sucker for cool notes. And in here, what we have is the note of lemon and bergamot and then lilac and lily of the valley. I love those very spring flowers. In the base there is white musk with heliotrope. So overall this is a very fresh, juicy, floral, musky, powdery fragrance. It smells like spring, it smells romantic, it smells powdery but also very very fresh so it's not heavy and I've been enjoying it very much because I've been wearing it to work for you know like last couple of weeks so just in case you love notes like this if you love clean and powdery fragrances and want them to be on the fresh and not sweet side I would definitely recommend you this one because it is really really special so with that being said let's move on to the next one and it is by the British niche house that is called Papillon Artisan Perfumes which is spell one one, two, five. So this one sounded quite cool because, you know, a lot of people are fans of this brand and there are cool notes in there. So I've already smelled it once and I was really overwhelmed by it. And now once again, there is this terpenic note in there that probably comes from pine, which is in the notes and also something very balsamic, very, very um, heavy, like conifer, like something very... Um, ambery, something incensey, and also with this green edge that uh, gives me this bad feeling in my throat, if you know what I'm talking about. So I guess the balsamic part comes from olibanum, which can be smoky because it's sort of like this incensey bulb. There is also the note of pine, which probably gives me this terpenic, very conifer-like, a little bit sharp moment. And also there is sandalwood, ambery, hemlock, and ylang ylang. I don't smell ylang ylang in here. It's not existing. It's a very... Um, harsh fragrance to me. It smells a little bit old. It smells um, headaching. I would definitely say this is a nighttime and even a wintertime perfume. I know it has a special story and let me know if you love fragrances in that style, but I would prefer something a bit um, more wearable, especially at this time of year, which is actually this fragrance by Dusita, which is her latest release that is called Anamkara. And you guys, this is just such a lovely fragrance because it smells very, very fresh, very floral. There is orange blossom with freesia and blood orange in the top. Then we have tuberose, jasmine, tea, peach, vanilla and rose demai in the heart and in the base patchouli with sandalwood, vetiver and cedar. I would definitely say that it smells like a floral tea to me personally. This is the fragrance that literally grows on you. So I will spray a bit because I'm going to the restaurant after filming this video. And it has a lot of green notes. It has a lot of tea, but it's a floral tea, okay? So in case you love tea, but you don't want it to smell leafy, you want to smell it floral and, um, you know, summery, very refreshing. This is definitely the fragrance for you. And with that being said, now I will actually smell something that, um, I have no experience with and this is also a new brand to me which is called Katana Perfumes and the fragrance is Santal Cigar. So here we go, my first impressions. By the way, these samples I got from Aquasion Natural which is an amazing place for those who love niche and indie perfumery. You can get samples from them and I have a discount so you can even save some money if you're ordering full-size bottles and they carry a lot of cool brands that I really like. So. 
here we go this is definitely a woody fragrance with a fresh start I smell roses in there I smell citruses and I smell creamy woodsiness that I think will be more prominent in the dry down once again I'm not familiar with this fragrance but so far first impressions are pretty nice I like that it smells grown up I like that it smells very elegant and at the same time there is something fun in there so you know it's not a heavy sandalwood fragrance there's a lot going on so so far I'm enjoying it very much but let me tell you about the fragrance that I was first like I won't be the fan and in the end I even ended up liking it which is Hiram Green's Vetiver and the reason why I wasn't that you know excited about it because it's not my favorite note however lately I've been discovering a lot of great Vetiver perfumes so if you like this note please let me know what's your favorite fragrance with it and I enjoy this particular one because it smells like almost um, woody honey so very very interesting there is ginger in there it's slightly spicy Vetiver in here is rooty smoky but there is like this very wild raw honey note and it is just gorgeous by the way this brand creates um, natural fragrances so in case you like perfumes in that style you might actually want to check it out or another brand that creates uh, natural fragrances April aromatics and this fragrance is everything I've been wearing for the last couple of days it is phenomenal it is out of this world my god the opening is so impressive because this is a citrus bomb and I'm not that person that uh, goes for citrus perfumes often however in here this is like an explosion these citruses smell so natural they smell uh, very pithy they smell very energizing they smell mouth-watering smells like uh, freshly squeezed um, multivitamin juice so I know that there is pink grapefruit in there mandarin yuzu uh, lemon peel but there is also tobacco with green tea damask rose neroli and coconut so this perfume just gives me massively summer vibes and it is called wild summer crush this is definitely my wild summer crush I find it is phenomenal and it is really really nice but with that being said let's move on from um, you know that a little sample haul that I got from Aquason natural two perfumes that I knew by La Tizan Parfumeur. I got two samples for free, only paid for the shipping, which is the deal of La Tizan Parfumeur's um, website. And this new collection that sort of looks very vegetal, it has very cool concept. I like the notes, for example, in this one, Tonka Blanc, there is the note of a cauliflower and I've never smelled a fragrance with it. And I like the very particular scent of this uh, vegetable, but I expected something very different from it because Tonka bean, they are more caramelly, they smell uh, slightly heavy and sweet. And this fragrance is very, very Mm, grapefruity woody to me so there is orange maybe that's why I get so many citruses they are cold they are cool they are a little bit metallic this fragrance got compared to my favorite Sarah uh, that is called um, a sweet pastry in Paris and that one smelled like a lemon cake this one smells like woody um, citrus something like grapefruit which reminds me of Mugler colognes so I'm not the biggest fan of it I was actually very disappointed with it let me uh, say it uh, right but I instead enjoyed the um, iris degree fragrance so it is about iris which is one of my most favorite notes and this is a very Oh my god, green iris. If you don't like powdery irises, you like green notes and you love iris and you want more rooty vibe out of it, that is it. I'm telling you, there is galbanum and pear in there or pea. How to say it correctly, please teach me below. But yeah, this is very green iris. It is rooty, it is green, it is very vibrant, slightly woody. I liked it a lot and actually at the moment I'm super uh, into irisy fragrances once again so with that being said you guys there are two fragrances left and they're by Musk Milan so I was really excited about them especially this one white whale and this is a very interesting fragrance that uh, at first smells uh, quite um, peppery because there is Madagascar pepper in there there is also salt which smells to me like a melon I don't know why but for me this is almost like a freshly powdery aromatic melon fragrance 
to me, maybe because of Osmanthus, which actually has this apricoty facet with a leathery background. There is also the note of violet, and they actually have a fragrance with those notes that is called um, Times Square. Maybe it is getting discontinued, I'm not sure, but there is also Oris Root, which I am enjoying very much, so this is definitely the fragrance right up my alley, unlike Side of Fern, because this one is actually in the Fougere style, which is not my go-to because to me it smells very manly. However, this one has this very elegant, very chic, very, how should I say, mm, um, smooth, uh, gentleman, uh, seductive uh, energy. So there is a note of fig, there is a lot of uh, lavender, but not too much, so it doesn't smell like aftershave. It's a very well-balanced fragrance with narcissus, geranium, tuberose, moss, sandalwood, patchouli, birch, so it smells very cool, very fresh. Someone uh, could uh, rock it on the everyday basis if you love more masculine fragrances, but you would like to wear a perfume in the style that would be rather unisex. And uh, those were my first impressions on a bunch new niche and indie fragrances. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If so, please make sure to give it a huge thumbs up and I will film more of these for you in the future. Let me know if you're already familiar with any of these fragrances. What do you think about them and if you will get them. And that was all. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done that already, please give it a huge thumbs up and check out the description box for all the helpful information and make sure to stay Stay tuned, smell good, and we'll see each other in the next one really soon. Bye, guys.